Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of The Android Factory. This video marks the beginning of a new season where we're going to revisit a very popular API that we worked with on the channel before and talk a little bit about modularization and build out a multi-module project. So if you're not aware, the API I'm talking about is the Rick and Morty API here. It worked really well a couple seasons ago. Figured we can revisit this because it's a just honestly a really good API. It's got some really nice uh, components to it that we can work with and we're going to redo it 100% in Compose, talking about multi-module architecture and if you saw my little post a little while ago, down here we have libraries. We have libraries for Java. We do not have libraries for Kotlin. So I'm thinking here we can go ahead and make the secondary module of this project, the networking module. And we can maybe even look to publishing this as a library. Maybe we get in touch with the guys behind this, or I think it's just one guy behind this, um, you know, this API. And we can go ahead and publish our library, maybe get it out there for the world to use, and we'll just see what happens. And so if you haven't seen the uh, previous season before, you can go watch it if you want. Otherwise, we're going to walk through this documentation all over again, and we're going to build out a very beautiful app, like I said, 100% in Compose. So do not worry. You don't need to be caught up. We're going to start fresh. But in today's episode, we're just going to talk a little bit about modularization. We're going to go ahead and build another module, and we're going to see how to configure it inside of our project. And so as we get started here, smash that like button, subscribe if you're brand new, let me know what you think about this series in the comments below. I'm very excited to get it going. And of course, all the code will be available on GitHub. Take a look in the description for more. So as we see here, I just have a basic project here, right? We have our simple Rick theme, a surface, the classic greeting, and we have, you know, the emulator ran here and we just have that, you know, little text widget on screen, nothing too fancy here. Inside of our build.gradle really didn't do anything after the file new project stuff, upgraded to version 11 for Java instead of 1.8. And I think that's about it. Set the compile SDK to 34, everything else is just file new project here. What is modularization or, or maybe why is it popular? Let's start there. What, what is the point of it? Well, you know, there are a handful of different benefits that come to it, but if we take a look at you know, what we see here inside of this package structure, right? We have this one app module, that's where predominantly all of our code lives. Uh, we have another, you know, source folder inside of here that contains the information that we care about. We really kind of trickle down into this main folder, right? You have your unit tests and your Android uh, integration tests and stuff like that here. Uh, but realistically, we live inside of this Java folder, even though we're creating Kotlin files, and all of our content is in here, right? And one thing that we do uh, inside of, you know, this project or this module is we create different folders, right? So we'll create a different folder here. Of course, it's called package, right? And we'll have, you know, domain models, and you'll have your models in here. And there's already a UI one, but for Compose, you might create another package and call it, you know, components or something like that, right? And we kind of separate things logically inside of our file tree here, uh, so that it makes life easier to kind of just conceptualize what should be in that, good separation of concerns. You know, we can talk about dependency injection, which we're obviously going to use in this project here, right? And so we just kind of separate things to whatever makes sense for us logically. And that's totally fine. That's a really good way to do things. But, um, you know, that is also one of the benefits of modularization, right? In this case here, we have all of our content inside of this Java folder, realistically, right? Uh, and then we trickle down inside of lowest level folder here that whatever you've named your application. And that's totally fine. There's not there's nothing wrong with that. But modularization can help break this up and increase a little bit of uh, the separation of concerns idea, it can kind of also allow you to pull things out into their own repositories later on, or in our case, an, an additional library later on. If you want to get into the nitty gritty of the uh, the build system, you know, you, you can increase build time when you have things split in different modules because you only need to recompile the modules that have changed. But realistically, the separation of concerns to me is probably the largest reason why it's interesting. And there's some other technical advantages to it. But realistically, it isn't necessary. It doesn't really matter, right? The only thing that the code or the application at the end of the day cares about is being able to see you know, all the files that it needs to see, have all of the logic come together and just not crash at the end of the day, right? The user has no idea if you have 
400 modules or if you have one module under the hood, and frankly, they don't care. <laughs> so it's not necessarily the most important thing, especially for smaller projects. It can be a little bit of overkill, but we're just going to go ahead and um, you know do it for the sake of this video here. And I think it's a pretty good abstraction, right? We're going to have all of the rest of our code inside of our app module, and then we're going to go ahead and have our networking layer inside of a different module so that we can go ahead and just kind of keep that good separation of concerns and you know, one module or one package is responsible for one thing, another one is responsible for another thing. So enough talk, I know I talked a little bit here, if you're still there, thank you so much for letting me ramble. We're just gonna go ahead and get something going here. So at the root folder here of our project, we're gonna go ahead and right click and say module. We're going to select our Android library and then realistically, we are going to change this to be called the network uh, and click finish, right? And then everything else just stays as is. We'll let the uh, project kind of sync and do its thing here. And soon enough, we should have another module down here named network. And we can go ahead and loosely take a look at um, the differences or the similarities between these two modules, right? So we have the parent folder here, app versus network, uh, you know, kind of the root folder holding everything else in there. Uh, you'll notice we don't have a build folder inside of this network module because we haven't built anything yet. Going back to that point of, uh, you know, the build system being kind of independent but across different modules, well, yeah, we haven't built anything from this module yet, so there's no build folder, there's no generated files and all that good stuff. But we have our libs folder that's the same, we have a source folder here, we have our git ignores, we have our Gradle information, and then also we just have some ProGuard ruling and things like that. And realistically, that's it, right? All these files down here are the project root folder files and things like that. So inside of the different modules, they look very, very similar. And if we go ahead and open the source here, we're going to see that they are very much identical as well, right? We're going to go ahead and click the main folder and we see the Java and all that good stuff. We don't have a resources folder at the moment, but we could very easily add one in. Uh, but that classic, you know, right click new module is basically duplicating our app module with just uh, that's about it, right? And they're basically just duplicating that app module. Of course, down here we have the com Android Factory Network instead of com Android Factory Simple Rick, right? That's the name of our project. So any of the files that we're going to have inside of here, right? Let's just go ahead and create a test file real quick. We're going to name it test file. Um, sure, we'll make it a uh, composable. Oh, okay. So that's one issue, right? And this is a perfect segue into kind of how these different modules are made um, and, and some differences between them, right? We don't have visibility into our at composable concept, but if you take a look here, right, we can very easily add that in. Well, why is that, right? We, we have some things in this module, some things not in another module, and realistically that boils down to the differences inside of our build.gradle file. If we take a look here, I'm trying to find out the best way, I guess this is this is going to work, the best way to compare some differences, we look at our app module uh, uh, dependencies block, there is a lot more in here, right? There's so much more. Specifically, there is all of this good stuff about compose. If we take a look at our network folder, there is nothing in here about Compose. Another difference as well is we have our, our uh, source compatibilities, our Kotlin options here, our JVM targets defaulting to the 1.8 version, whereas in here we have upgraded them to the version, you know, the Java version 11. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this info over there so we stay in tune. But one of the downsides here of um, the multi-module projects is that you now have multiple different Gradle files that you now need to keep in sync, right? And we're seeing it already that we don't have the, you know, composable imports that has this project or sorry, this module has nothing, no understanding about what a composable is or any of those possible imports. So we're going to have to add them in. Now, you know, as an aside, this is eventually going to become a module that's really deals with our networking layer. So this one's going to have our retrofit imports and do all of the mapping and the network calls and the handling of errors and all that kind of stuff. So this module might not need to know about Compose and have those imports. But for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and copy these over here so that we can kind of have a talking point, right? So I'm just going to copy those. We're going to go ahead and paste them in here. We're going to click sync now. And once this syncs, then we will start. I think that happened already. That's pretty quick. Now we'll see that we already have the option to now import this thing here. We will name this, uh, well, I'll just name it test file for simplicity, right? And now we have a composable called test file. It's a little silly, right? But we do have uh, some text that we can put in here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one right here. And we're just going to change, oops. 
We're gonna copy this one here and we're just gonna change some content about it. Okay, perfect. So we have a composable function here that is just a text widget and everything seems to be good now, right? We don't have any error cases, we don't have any issues, but that is because we had to import this stuff here. So we're gonna have to keep a close eye on, you know, upgrading one or changing, changing a build.gradle file in one module and making sure that it's compatible with the changes in another. Another one real quickly here is our compile SDK is set to 33, whereas our app module is set to 34. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade that. There are some differences here. If we take a look at inside of this Android block, right, we don't have all of the same information here, right? We don't have, uh, I don't think we have namespace. Oh, we do have namespace, sorry. But we don't have a bunch of additional things inside of this default config, right? We don't have the application ID. We don't have the version code, the version name, and things along those lines. And that's because, you know, some technical differences under the hood between this just being uh, basically a, a library that we're importing versus an entire Android application. And last little bit that I'll say here is again, the app module has the com Android application plugin, whereas the uh, the, the network module has the com Android library plugin. So again, there's a couple differences under the hood, but realistically the bulk of it works the same, but just wanna call out you know some of those things for you in case you get tripped up. So cool, now we have this composable, uh, all of these composable dependencies in here. We have this one running. Let's actually now get this test file. Let's use this composable inside of our main activity, right? And you would like to think that you could just go like this and say test file. But the problem is that this module, this main activity exists inside of the app module over here, right? So this has no visibility into this other module right here, which seems a little unfortunate, a little unintuitive, because you'd think it's all in the same project, you can kind of, you know, figure it out, it's all there, you could see it, blah, blah, blah. But unfortunately, the system doesn't have the understanding of it. Now, there's a very quick fix here that we can just go ahead and uh, implement. We're gonna pop down to our dependencies block here, we're gonna go ahead and call the implementation function. And instead of just, you know, passing in some kind of dependency here, we're actually gonna go ahead and do something like this, where we import an entire platform and we change something inside of here. So we actually just go for network. And that is a way to reference this module that exists inside of this project. I believe the last thing we need to do here is actually change this around to project instead of platform. With just this one simple line here, we now have the visibility we need. We should be able to, there it is, we can just hit Alt Enter. And now we have imported the entire module so we get the visibility to everything. At this point, it is just that test file. If we go ahead and command click on this, we could see some things in the tooltip there, com androidfactory.network, so it's resolving the package that it's from, and we can just jump straight to it, right? So now the project, the IDE is in full sync, it has visibility that it needs, and now we can do anything we want in this, in this uh, module, in the network module, and it will be visible inside of the app module. I'm just gonna go ahead and rerun this here so we can show you a full end-to-end -end that you know this text composable is on the screen here. Okay, folks, I'm just coming back here. We have run into an error. After a very quick Google search, it just made it clear that we have not completely copied over everything from our build.gradle file that we needed. So sorry for those that overlooked, but we're gonna need the uh, build features here, compose true, and we're gonna need the compose options at this point also inside of our uh, network module or any module that wants uh, to use compose. So I believe this should fix it. Again, going back to the point of, you know, needing to maintain multiple Gradle files, uh, you're gonna get, you know, kind of snagged here uh, with some of these differences and such. And as we see, uh, well, it's not the best looking. All right, and there we go. We're gonna go ahead and wrap these inside of a column so that we get this UI that actually looks uh, somewhat reasonable. But we can see here, hello from the other module right underneath the, you know, hello Android greeting. So we can see that, you know, this project is now actually fully functional. Everything does come together. However, one thing I mentioned before we ran it was that we now, by, by let's see, by adding this in, we now have visibility into anything that we want inside of this module. Well, that's true, but it also needs to be public or it needs to at least be visible from some kind of external source. And inside of Kotlin, you could see here that this function is, uh, well, it's not declared, you know, it doesn't have any kind of uh, visibility modifier on it. So by default, it is public. If we wanted to go ahead and have uh, something private here, now we cannot call that 
from the other module and even the better one here for uh, kind of multi-module implementations is the internal keyword, which is going to do something very similar here, right? We're not able to access it from outside of the module and we're able to then just mention that this is basically an internal function. In this case, it's an internal composable, but in regular Kotlin land, this is going to be an internal function to the module and in not visible in you know the outer modules that import this module right so what we want to do is we want to think of this project here this, sorry this module here as a third party library we're going to go ahead and build it out as such meaning it's going to be completely independent of the ui it's going to be completely independent of the rest of the project in our case we know how it's going to be used and that's going to shape how this module is going to look and the functionality that it has but realistically we want to build this as if it is just a third party library that anybody can import anybody can use and it has its one job of in this case you know making network calls returning data handling error situations all that good stuff but we really want to make sure that there is a difference between this network module and this app module and we're going to go ahead and you know eventually we'll, we'll kind of talk about those differences as, as they come up here but the internal keyword or the private you know keywords are, are ways that we can go ahead and reduce the visibility from the external modules to only the stuff that it needs right it doesn't need to have access to everything it really needs to have access to just the points or the, the functionality that it actually needs the the other modules actually need right so hopefully that's a reasonable introduction here to uh you know the multi-module layer and that kind of stuff we'll go ahead and leave it public so that we can go ahead and see it here have no issues but that is kind of the concept there we are basically just going to have a different file structure inside of this module and it's going to have its own functionality. We're going to import that functionality and use it accordingly. And the application is going to come together as if all of this content here was inside of the app module, right? And that's the beauty of it. It's seamless to the user. It's seam seamless on the end result. But technically under the hood, there's going to be some differences and it's going to be some fun that we can have with uh, you know, this architecture. So if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate a like. Comment down below how I'm doing. Let me know if this stuff's interesting to you. And as I mentioned here, we are going to go ahead and revisit this API, my favorite API that I've seen here, uh, build out a nice network layer that we can eventually uh, publish and, and hopefully get on here on the on the site here. We'll have to reach out to this person here to uh, see if they're interested in it. But um, anyway, that's a little ways away from now. So I'm excited to bring this season to you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.